All right, we're here with Rob from Dish, and Rob, you're going to show us the new Dish Explorer. Tell us what it's about. So really, um, about six months ago, we took a look at the second screen landscape that's developing, and we, we found that there really wasn't a, a clear leader, and our customers were getting the best experience they could get. So we decided to design our own, own app, and we uh, kind of focused on three different tenets. So the first is uh, making it easy to discover new content for you to watch. The second is being able to fully control your TV experience from the iPad. And the third is uh, keeping you engaged in the shows that you're watching once you've decided what you want to watch. So we're gonna, first thing we're going to look at um, is, is the discovery engine. So we have actually five different methods of recommending content to you right now. So the first thing is we take a look at what people are actually watching um, in your local area. Um, and we serve that up to you from a most popular to least popular. So if you see the screen right now, right now, um, Law & Order is the most uh, watched show in the Las Vegas area. Um, and then comes to the control part. So if you want to watch Las Vegas, all you have to do is hit the play icon on the screen. We see the TV change to Las Vegas. And then here we are in our uh, the third part of the experience, which is the uh, enhanced data experience, or the integration, or the engagement experience. So we give you uh, the live Twitter feed surrounding the show. We show you all the episodes that are coming on for that show. Uh, if you have any DVR content, we'll show you that as well. And then if there's anything available in our, in our large 20,000 item catalog of on-demand events, you'll also be able to, to see it and play it all from the screen. Some of the other ways we recommend content is we actually use uh, social data, social media data, be it Facebook, Twitter, Get Glue, Viggle. Um, so, we, so just like we show you the most popular shows that are actually being watched, we also show you the most popular shows that people are talking about. Um, the, the last three ways we, we, show you, we recommend content to you uh, is we take a look at your Facebook, all your Facebook friends, we take a look at what content they like, bounce it against what you can actually watch, and then display that to you in an order, again, the most friends that like the show to the least friends that like the show. Uh, finally, um, in, in kind of the generic view, we'll show you um, shows that you've liked inside the app, um, so when they come on. So for instance, right now, we're going to go to My Likes. Uh, the only show that I've currently liked in the app is My Kitchen Nightmares, or the, the one that's the, currently the only one that's on, anyway, of all the ones that I've liked. Uh, the absolute last way we have dis of, uh, show, of discovering content for you is what we call uh, is regarding sports. So we use the Thu's excitement rating to actually rank games that you watch. Uh, so right now, this is a snapshot of a couple weeks ago. Uh, so at this time, the Niners-Seahawks game was the most exciting game that came on that day. So it's the number one. So if we take a look at you know, the Colts-KC game, uh, again, you can dive right in. And our box is going to do a little weird thing right now because we're in demo mode kind of to show you what's actually available in the sports stuff. Um, so in addition, when it comes to sports, in addition to give you, giving you the, uh, the Twitter feed, you still get that. We're also going to give you all the detailed sports stats if my iPad will co cooperate, um, both on an individual player level and on the, the team as a whole. And when you're looking at the individual player level, not only are we going to give you the team leader uh, in a stat, but so for rushing, at, rushing attempts, you can actually click on it, it'll expand and show you everybody on that team who's had a rushing attempt that game. Uh, finally, um, whatever league you're watching, we're going to show you the top four hottest games that are in that league. And in order to start watching them, it's as simple as diving into it and then hitting either the play or the record icon, whether you want to watch it now or later. So the key thing about this, though, uh, the one thing that really sets us apart from, from where everybody else is at is you have full access to all of your on-demand and DVR content. So here we are just searching for our DVR content. We see everything on the set-top box. It'll take a minute for the high-res images to load, depending on how your network speed is. Uh, so you select, select an event, come up with a media page. So here are all the events that I currently have on my hard drive. We can flick over to here are all the events that are currently coming on, period. And then to play something, it's as simple as just hitting the play icon. And here we are again watching <laughs> my favorite show, Key Keeping Up With The Kardashians. So that's it for uh, Dish Explorer. Show us the interesting news we had yesterday from the press conference was the new hopper with Sling. Yes. And being able to transfer over content from a Sling, uh, from, from the hopper, Sure. To your iPad. Can you show us that? Absolutely. So um, we, when, we, when, we, when we take a look at mobile apps, we kind of we think they kind of fall into two different paradigms. So there's the mobile apps where you want to consume content and actually watch content. Uh, so Dish Anywhere and our new Hopper Transfers app. And then there's the Explorer app where it comes to you want to uh, enhance your first screen experience, right? So Dish Anywhere takes care of consumption anywhere you have an uh, internet connection. 
But you don't always have an internet connection. Sometimes like you're on a flight, uh, you don't have an LTE device, you want to give the kids something to watch. So for that reason, we came up with Hopper Transfers. What we'll actually do is, once, a, a record, once a, an event has been recorded on the DVR, we can prepare it for mobile and then transfer it over Wi-Fi to the iPad of your choice. So some of the stipulations are, you can only transfer each, device, each uh, event one time and one time only. Um, and then some, uh, some content will actually move from the hopper to your iPad, so you might actually lose it. Let's go and take a look and see what it looks like. So here we are. Uh, this is a rather big iPad. So we have all the, uh, we have a bunch, you see we have a bunch of content that we previously uh, brought over. Um, so I could put this in, I'm not going to because Wi-Fi is a little dicey at the convention center, but I could put it in airplane mode and play any of this content right now. So here we are watching Top Gun. It's a two hour movie. Uh, you'll see the quality is very, very good. And then you have the full scrub bar as well. So instead of just the, the traditional um, DVR buttons, the fast forward, skip ahead, back, we also have the traditional streaming experience where you can actually just move the bar up and down. Now when it comes to, um, to the actual transfer process, it's a two-stage process. So the first is the, the hopper has to, on the hopper itself, has to prepare that event for the transfer. So we have to convert it from whatever format it's in to something that's compatible with your iPad. And that that's, happens in real time, unfortunately. We, we haven't really found a way to speed it up. And most similar, most companies that have a similar product are, are also in real time. Now, when it comes to the transfer, the transfer itself is extremely quick. Um, it's usually only a couple minutes to 10 minutes, depending on the speed of your network and how big the file is. Anything else we should be uh, yeah, seeing? So one thing that wasn't in the, or that was kind of hidden in the press conference is we put a DNA renderer on the set-top box now. So we've had a player on it forever. The home media, it's a clunky experience. It's not the best experience. So instead of um, kind of revising and adapting that experience, we decided to enable a renderer on the box because there are all these companies that are making great experiences already when it comes to DLNA. So the one we're going to look at today is iMediaShare. Um, pretty popular app. It's really good. So in addition to, um, to getting content from your local network via DLNA server or actual content on the app itself, you can actually surf different websites. So we're going to take a look at Funny or Die, one of my favorite websites. So here we're going to select the icon we're going to play. So you're going to see a bunch of bunch of different um, options here, but in your home, you're only going to want one hopper. I have 30 hoppers here, so I have to kind of filter through which one I actually want to play it on. Oh, that's not it. Oh, here we go. So here we are. So we selected, we found the hopper in my massive list of hoppers. Um, you get a pop-up on the screen, and so you're only going to see it once. You just have to essentially allow the device to play. So here, <laughs> here we are playing the first uh, video from Funny or Die, whatever, whatever it is. So in addition to that, if you have any, uh, if you have any photos or videos or music on the iPad itself, you can also serve it from the iPad with this app to the hopper itself. Excellent. Are you planning on rolling this out to other platforms besides the iOS platform? Uh, well, so this isn't this isn't platform specific. We're totally agnostic when it comes to um, the renderer. So Android, uh, iMediaShare is an Android app. It works. There's Twonky Beam. There's Swifta. All these apps are across platforms and they'll work regardless. The only requirement is that your iPad has to be on the same network as the Hopper. So that's a good question though. Going back, so Hopper transfers is iPad only, and it requires a Hopper with Sling. It'll be out later this month. Um, Dish Explorer actually came out yesterday. It's iPad only and requires Hopper or the Hopper with Sling. Now the transfer program, does that require a special program on the iPad or is that built into the Explorer program? No, no. So the, the transfers piece is a, like there's a separate app called Hopper Transfers Got it. That, require, that you'll need to, to in order to, to both move and watch content on the go. So now you've got a second interface now where you can bring content back and forth between your computer to the internet, the TV, it's, it's tying it all together and it looks yeah. beautiful. Great Thanks. job on your work. Thanks. That's the uh, Dish Explorer and uh, back to you.